Good morning, students. Today we are studying the types of bridge. Among that, the first type is the foot over bridge, and the sub topics are the first is definition. And what is the definition? The definition is the bridge which are used only for the purpose of walking. Not any one single vehicle allowed on the bridge, and that type of bridge is called the foot over bridge. Some example. For example, if you are going to a station. the one platform to another platform if you want to go so you don't want to cross with the railway track you are using one of the bridge like this this is the foot over bridge okay in this this is the path where you are walking and this is the path where you are walking through first platform to another platform so this is called the foot over bridge and wherever the traffic the traffic is very much in that place the road crossing at that place also we have the bridges also in our baroda railway station and in one of the foot over bridge at out of the railway station from the railway platform to the another another road crossing that is the bridge is called the foot over bridge now the second is members which are the members of foot over bridge this is this you can see this is the vertical member this is the diagonal member this is top core member and this is bottom core member so these four members you must have designed for the foot over bridge and then there is a types of bridges also there and the first is deck bridge second is through bridge and third is half through bridge so this three type of bridge are there now for the design of this foot over bridge basically the steps must be required today we are discussing only the steps we are we have a time of this lecture we will discuss the example also but before that we must have to understand the steps what we will do for the example in this you can see the first geometry of the lattice girder now the geometry of lattice girder for that what is geometry for example this is the bridge how much height required how much span between the all cross so that is required so this is the first is assume the depth of girder this is the depth of girder the depth this depth for that we have a span from this to last end this is this span and that span divided by 8 that is your depth of girder why we are taking 8 so we are generally divide this in 8 equal parts so that's why we are taking 8 same way we are length of panel the length of panel this is the panel so panel length having l by 8 so this is eight parts we have so this is l by 8 and which is required now last is diagonal and according to the pythagoras you can say the right angle triangle having the width and height we have height and width both we have so for that diagonal we are applying pythagoras that is this is a that means height b that is width and the diagonal is calculated by pythagoras That is a square plus b square square. So this is our first step. That is initial calculation for some data. Now the second step. Second step is how much load will come on this truss or on this foot over bridge. For that, dead load, live load, and floor finish. The live load and floor finish generally we have given in the exam. If the dead load is not given, the dead load is depend on the thickness of slab. This is the thickness of slab. So that slab thickness already given in our exam, and then that slab thickness multiply with power the density of concrete. The density of concrete is twenty five kilonewton per meter cube. Whenever you multiply that thickness and density, you are getting the answer is kilonewton per meter square. But we would like to convert in UDL. For that, we are multiplying it with a per meter length. We have the span is this much. That is the, for example, this is three meter. So you must have to multiply with three. That is kilometer per meter square multiplied with meter. You are getting kilometer per meter. Now, what is remaining? That is a beam. So beam, we are assuming that self height is point five. This is not compulsory. You can assume that point five to one. It is the maximum limit. This is point five. That is kilometer per meter. Now adding both, then you are getting some total weight. The total weight is W one plus W two. W one is total of this, and W two is your assumption of weight of B. So total weight you are getting. Now factor of that. Why we are taking factor load? 
if we are taking the nominal load, sometimes the intake load, sometimes the jerk, sometimes the vibration, that load we are not capturing during the calculation. So at that time we are calculating this factor load, so that is taken as a 1.5 times. So this is 1.5 into W. So this is your factor load. Now, after getting this factor load, our aim to find the section. For section, some basic requirement. First is moment. From moment, that is you know the simply support. We are always assume this is the simply support from both ends. So for that, we have a load, we have a span. So the moment formula is W S by A. Now after moment, we have a shear force. Shear force is the end reactions. If the total beam having a UDL, so this is W into L divided by 2. So both MP and VP, after that, we are finding ZP. Why ZP? ZP is a plastic section modulus. From ZP, we can select this section. And that section we are taking from the steel table. But before that, ZP having a formula MP into gamma M0 upon F5. Where gamma M0 and F5 both are constant for specially steel structure. For gamma M0, that is 1.10. And F5, that is 250 Newton per mm square. In this, you can see this is a Newton dot mm. This is Newton per mm square. And this is Newton per mm square. This having no unit. So after this, you are getting this ZP in mm cube. Then, our steel table having the ZP is in cm cube. So you don't forget that this mm cube convert in cm cube. Whenever you convert the cm cube, then and then you can find that section from the steel table. So for steel table, you must have to see ZP. And then, after getting this ZP, you select this I section. Generally, we are using in this I section, angle section, different sections. So you can select from the steel table. After getting the steel table section, some properties you must have to write. That is D. D means the depth. Depth of I section from top of the flange from the bottom of the flange. That distance is called capital D. Now BF, that means flange width. The flange width, that is BF. The thickness of flange, that is TF. Thickness of wave, that is TW. IZZ, that is directly given in the code. That is I says that there is section modulus above ZZ axis, that is a moment of inertia, and then radius R, that is a root radius. Whenever the I section is there, some curvature is there. That curvature in some radius, that is called R. And the last is ZB, which is more than our final Z. So after getting this, we want to check this section is okay or not. And this section will take our moment or shear force that both. It can be taken, then and then we can use this section as a practically on site. For that, we are trying to find the MD, that is a design moment. Design moment having this formula only is given in the IS 800 2007 on page number 53, close 8.2.1.2. From that, we are getting this formula where beta B is a constant, the value of beta B already given in the code, and that is 1 ZP. So remember that ZP is taken from the steel table. Don't use the test ZP. Okay, because we are checking our section. So that's why the ZP of section you must have to take here. F5250 that I already told you. And the last is gamma MC. After getting this all values, putting this value, you are getting some value MD. If the MD value is more than your value MP, that MP is the value which are getting from the given load. That means this MD will come and this MD will be taken by this section. That means you know MD must be greater than MP. So and so this section will be okay. If the MD will be less, so immediately change this section and again find the MD. And if the MD will be more, then their section is okay. But the one check is also remaining. That is shear force. The shear force having the formula VD is equal to AV into F5 upon root 3 gamma MZ. Now, the basic knowledge you have was that first is moment always taken by flange and the shear force always taken by the wave. So whenever you find the moment, at that time you have taken always the ZP of your flange and the second, whenever you are finding the shear force, the shear force always taken by the wave. So AV is the area of wave of your I section. And from that AV, F5 is fixed, gamma M0 is fixed, 
and AB is your area of weight. After getting this BD, of course, this BD is the capacity to take the shear force of particular section. And the VP is coming on the section on the bridge that is from the load which is given. If the VD is more than the VP, then your section is okay. This is your complete section selection part. Now the next part is to design the type, which type of foot over bridge you are selecting. In that number of type of foot over bridge, that is C type, N type, this is your N type foot over bridge. So the next step we will discuss in the next lecture, that is foot over bridge with N type. So we will design the N type having the vertical member, diagonal member, bottom core, top core and on that portion we will find individual load taking of that member and after that load we will design the section which section we will put for these members.